Hey everyone, it's Trisha Carr. I am joined here today with Crystal Ann Compton and we wanted to come and have a chat together and talk to you guys also about magic. Yeah, I want to talk specifically about how to demystify magic. And um, I know when I, we both came up through fundamentalist Christianity and we were both taught that there was a lot of spirit in Christianity, but it was like a good kind and then a bad kind. And the bad kind usually involved stuff like magic. And so there's a little bit of this um, weird stigma around it. And when in actuality, magic is really manifestation. It's, it's bringing about a result or an outcome through your force of will. So I kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about it. You are going to be teaching an upcoming class on this in the Lightworkers Lab. Um, it's called Manifesting with Magic, is that correct? That's it, yep. And if you're watching this video at a time that isn't um, you know, present to us making this video now, it should be available in the Lightworkers Lab Advanced Learning as an on-demand class. Yeah, we'll make it, we'll make it available um, evergreen because it's gonna be wonderful. So it's a two-day class. I think you're gonna do two different classes. And mm -hmm. with the first day, you're gonna talk about magic. And the second day, you're gonna talk about different like divination tools or like what are you going to do on the second day? Yes. Well, the first day I will talk um, a bit about like what you're saying, demystifying it and understanding how it's very practical. It's something that we are doing. And just like in, in the way that, you know, if, you, if we take it back to maybe many centuries where people thought that they got ill, physically ill because the gods were against them. But now we understand that it's actually our partnership with our bodies and with nature that keeps right. us on the healthy side. And of course, that isn't only just on the physical, it's the emotional and mental as well that helps our physical bodies stay healthy. So as you're talking about the stigma that we may have gained from dogmatic, fear-based, fundamentalist kinds of religion, that I think it's time for us to outgrow that in the same way that we outgrew the stigma of how, how we got sick and that the gods were against us. Because right. again, those people who are afraid of the gods making them ill or the demons, whatever they may call them, making them physically ill, they were still just managing their health, even though they weren't conscious of it. And so this is how I would translate it to really kind of lay that out. And there actually are what there are, I don't know if I'm dozens or hundreds, probably in the hundreds, I would say scientific studies on magic and they call it psi research. Right. And then now the second day we'll talk about, literal tools to be able to do it. So yes, rituals, divination. Divination is a word that is also sometimes stigmatized. Yeah, it is. And it's it's just, so divination funny. is just like tools that we can use in order to manifest something. And there's all kinds. Yeah. You can make your own tools. It doesn't even have to be something super traditional or something that um, is very well known. You can make your own tools to, to manifest as well, which I think is interesting. So are you going to be talking about uh, specific tools or are you going to be kind of just what are you going to be talking about? Yeah, techniques and tools. And so the way that I wanted to show you since you were talking about make your own tools, this is my handy dandy pendulum that I made. <laughs> These are items that I found. <laughs> this is an old ring. Oh, that, I love it. Yeah, and this is an ugly gold chain. I mean, it's not ugly in and of itself, but it, it, Crystal and I, you know, you, yeah. know how, you know how men dressed in the early 90s? Totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this was this was something that I think my husband was given for like high school graduation. Right. <laughs> and this was, but it probably got a really good weight to it though. It does. Exactly. Yeah. And this ring, I actually didn't know the history of this ring after I I had picked it out of my husband's. He doesn't really have a jewelry box, but he has this right. collection like with this stuff. And I was like, oh, what's this ring? Can I wear it? And I thought it was something that he picked up like in Melrose, in the Melrose Avenue, where there's a lot of right. like kind of Dilfy kind of wear. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a man accessory, and I was like, seriously, you're going to wear this? But he's like, yeah, I use it. I don't wear that. I found out many years later after using it as a pendulum that it was this uncle of his who passed when he was very young, but he was very esoteric and very mystical and, you know, as well as religious, but he had this kind of very mystical library of esoteric books. And so he was a very there mystical There are no person. coincidences. That's perfect. Right? Yeah. So my mother-in-law told me about it. Anyway, so that's my pendulum. It's not I didn't purchase anything new from my pendulum. So anyway, back to what am I going to be teaching? The tools, I will be teaching tools and techniques. So yes, this would, anything that is assisting us in our understanding and our, our manifestation or just, you know, our well-being, I call that a tool. Really everything that is, that we consider secondary to us, even Crystal as our friendship, Crystal is a tool for me. She's a reflection of my heart and our friendship. So 
the reason I highlight that is because tools work if they are tools and they don't become our master. Right. Because uh, if they become our master, then we actually are bypassing our own free will. And it's just, it's just wrong. It won't, it won't actually function right because we, we need to function with the laws of the universe and with the laws of the will of God in right. order for things to be manifest. Well, and with divination tools, I've always looked at them as helpers, mm -hmm. um, but it really uh, gateway tools that allow you to tap into your own inner magic. And that's where we kind of get back to this negative connotation around magic. I really want there to be a return um, to the sensibility that we are magical and that our lives can be filled with wonder and with magic and really it exists within us. And so the tools that we use are amplifiers of that or ways that we can get into contact with that. And so that's, that's perfectly divine. I would think that God would want that. I would think that source would want us to be able to connect in that way, in whatever way is possible. But the fact is there are certain things that we can do, certain rituals, certain techniques, and certain tools that help us to get there faster or help us to manifest faster. And that's the kind of stuff I'm really interested in because we all, I mean, we all want a little shortcut Right, or we all want something that will get us into that really quick and dynamic alignment and divination tools and magic can help us do that. But this is magic with a C, not necessarily magic with a K. What's the difference, do you think, when people say magic with a K? Well, I think that people started putting the K on the end because they wanted to highlight a really kind of a religion or you know a, a, a structure of belief system that that had to do with, well, it had a lot to do with Wicca, I think, the religion of Wicca, which is actually a relatively new religion, but mm -hmm. magic with a K, I think that actually started, that, that before Wicca was totally developed, it actually span, stem, stems back to even further before that, and it, it really was, I think, trying to stand apart from the stigma and of, that was placed upon it by religion or, you know, dogmatic and you know, just the fear in itself. So it wanted to set itself apart in these magic schools, these esoteric thought, and you know, they always called it the secrets. That you know, they were studying the secrets of of um, right. life and of nature. Pardon, an initiation, a mystery school, right? Mystery, yes, the mystery schools. And again, I think that was just in reaction to what was being, what was the overriding kind of collective consciousness being imposed upon us, the conditioning. And, you know, I think it, it's, it's, again, since you and I come from fundamentalist Christianity, there is text in the Bible. And by the way, I always like, when I talk about the Bible, I always like to point out that the Bible is, is not in and of itself. There's no Bible that's literally magical. Like you could rip some pages out of a right. Bible. I give it to Crystal and it doesn't self-heal. So it always right. is filtered. <laughs> it's filtered through men. It's, you know, we have, we have how many different versions of the Bible. Nevertheless, there, there are really wonderful philosophical and quite magical guidances in there, but we have to, like anything else, it should be a tool. And that might actually, if you are someone who believes that the word of the Bible is infallible, that might actually give you tension and that's okay. I, I get it. I don't mean to confront anyone's beliefs. So right. I just like to say that as a side note, when I point out that the, the word, and there are some scriptures that actually say, divination practices and the use of cards and the use of this that and the other thing that they are evil right. we've really got to take things like that in the context right. you know the, the the writers of those letters at the time were pointing out people that had maybe let those tools become the master and he's mm -hmm. talking about a, a sort of collective that had gone off the mark in the same way that not that this is, has to be a Bible lesson, but in the same way that in the New Testament, Paul writes letters saying that women and men have to sit on opposite sides of the church and the women have to have their heads covered. I mean, we took it in the context because that was appropriate for the culture. Right. And again, even if you don't come from Christianity, we still actually are really influenced in westernized culture by all of this kind of thought. I have clients of mine who didn't come up in any kind of Christian church and they sort of had the same kind of healing that they have to go through. And it's really just because right. of the, the societal kind of conditioning it's in there. Right. And, and yeah, I, was say, I think with magic with the K there is the definite pagan 
mm -hmm. um, connection to that. And I think there's a, a misunderstanding about what paganism is, and there's also negativity around that. And so people shy away from it. So I think the emphasis really needs to be manifestation. And it yes. really, well, first of all, we are magical. Jesus said, we are all gods. Well, he quoted that, we are all gods. Um, but second, we came here to be creators. We came here in the likeness of our creator, created in that likeness and perfection into, in an, uh, into a fallible or an imperfect dimension, but to create. And we get to use all of the resources available to us. We get to um, intend for what that's supposed to be. We get to use whatever we can um, through inspiration or through our own reasoning in order to create the lives that we want. And I think tapping into our natural magic and our natural ability is the way to do that. We're always talking about as teachers, intelligent design, intelligent life design, like what kind of life do you really want to live? Do you want to live a financially independent life? Do you want to live a life with somebody that you truly have a heart connection with? Like, what does that look like? Being able to visualize that and to form an intention around that. Like that's the first part of magic is actually conceiving of the vision for a, what is the scripture of people, uh, people perish with a, a lack of vision, people perish, how does it go? I'm not familiar with what you're <laughs> People perish from a lack of vision. I forget what the scripture is, but it's oh. absolutely correct. If they can't see it, then they really can't manifest it. So the first thing to do in order to have a magical life is to get really clear about what it is you want to materialize with your magic wand. What kind of life do you want to have, right? Absolutely, because again, whether we look at it through some of that lens of, of Christianity uh, through any belief system truly and from the perspective of metaphysics and you know that that we have we, you either believe in a free will universe or you don't so the law of free will means that we get to manifest all the way through the many 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 subtle layers of whatever our desires are whatever twists and turns are in our conscious and subconscious mind that is what we manifest that is what free will is, and it is not it is not thwarted by the universe. By there's no angel or nor God who would interfere with our absolute free will, and that's what divination and manifestation techniques help us to do, to get us in alignment, to align our free will, to align our desire, our intention, and then our attention. Let allow that to make the intention to become formed as attention and then we impress that upon the field of the universal plane.